Hey BC, how's it going? Um, again, long time since I recorded a video. I say that about every video at this point. Um, so maybe I'll just stop saying it. Um, so yeah, we're on quarantine, or not quarantine because no one's sick. Um, involuntary lockdown, I guess is a better word because, you know, I live in Waco, the whole county here is, uh, and pretty much the whole state is under the um, shelter in place order. So, you know, like a lot of you guys, um, we're stuck here. I mean, we can still leave. I mean, we went to the grocery store today and uh, we can do that kind of thing. Uh, as far as our work, we're both still getting paid, me and my wife, Abby. Um, and that we're really lucky in that sense. We're thankful for that. Um, but as far as like actual work to do at home, there's not a lot. And actually in my case, there's zero work to do. So um, yeah, I'm kind of bored. And I've been, you know, itching to make a video for a little while now. And at this point I have no excuse not to. So here I am recording a video finally. And as you may notice, I'm in a different place than usual. I'm on our new couch. We just got this like two weeks before the lockdown went in place. Um, again, good timing. Everything, all the timing has, has worked out pretty well recently, so. Um, I have quite a few um, things to show here. Uh, I can't remember when my last video was. This is at least, you know, a couple months worth of, uh, of finds. Um, I got stuff, you know, from online and uh, in, in person when I could do that, and that was awesome. And I can't wait to finally go back out in person again and uh, get some stuff. But um, to start with, I'll also I'll show some some Goodwill CDs I got. So I've been hitting up Goodwill pretty frequently um, in the months and, and weeks leading up to everything. Um, and these this is pretty much uh, all I found uh, in that time. These were a dollar each. It was a bunch of Mark Kozlik slash uh, Sun Kill Moon CDs. So this is a uh, double live deal mark kozilek and as a live performer you know he's kind of notorious for being a perfectionist and so um you know he he doesn't do a whole lot of talking in the performance but you know he's he's perfectly in tune and and everything like that and then uh two lps i already showed one um this one is uh finality and Admiral Fell Promises. This one's actually uh, Sun Kill Moon, which is his uh, project. So yeah, these these are cool Goodwill finds for a dollar. I mean, in Waco, that's really cool because um, you don't really see a lot of that kind of music in thrift stores. Um, not that you see that kind of music in thrift stores anywhere else, but in here especially, it's a lot of country and um, you know, sort of gospel, that kind of thing, CDs, anyway. Uh, one seven inch to show. It's the classic Rites of Spring, uh, All Through a Life. Uh, I guess you could call it an EP, but you know, Rites of Spring has two releases and this is uh, the first one. So, Rites of Spring, considered one of the earliest emo bands. Um, they're def this is definitely leaning more, uh, you know, with the DC hardcore thing being on Discord and, um, and everything like that. A um, couple members, specifically Guy, and I think, um, uh, I can't remember if it's the drummer or one of the guitar players, but um, they would, you know, go on to join Fugazi. I'm losing my um, punk credibility here by not being able to name who it was, but definitely Guy. And um, I picked this one up online. It was cheap. This, uh, it's not like an original or anything. It's a, not, I want to say like early 2000s repress. Um, and it's hard to tell sometimes with Discord, they keep everything in press. So it's not like, I mean, the, the super hardcore collectors will, you know, pay a premium for first pressings and things like that um, for a lot of Discord stuff, but it's it's all in print. Um, so there's almost no reason to. And then I move on to the giant stack of LPs sitting here. Um, so the way I have this organized, it's, it's loosely chronological, except at the beginning I'm starting with all the uh, new releases that I picked up. So this first one here, uh, actually the first two, I ordered at the same time from Top Shelf Records, one of my favorite indie labels. 
And um, I think I had ordered these like right as we were going into lockdown. So these showed up like at the start of it, which was good. But uh, the new Queen of Jeans album, um, If You're Not Afraid, I'm Not Afraid. And Top Shelf will start doing this um, OB. It's not really a true OB. It's one of those, you know, promo strips that just kind of like, you know, sticks on the side um, that a lot of people are doing. But they, they kind of started doing that and it's adding a little more uniformity to their releases, which I like. Um, except it's not on the other one that I got, which came out after this. But anyway, um, yeah, this is the uh, the new Queen of Jeans album. And I've talked about Queen of Jeans, uh, their previous album to this. I talked about that before. Um, I would describe them definitely, uh, you know, adjacent to the whole um, sort of uh, Midwest emo thing. Um, definitely not the same genre as that they're they have a little more of a doo-wop influence and uh, they talk about that all the time and you can definitely hear it it shows in the music but um they what do they call themselves like crockpot rock i think is what they say it says right here yeah crockpot pop um so that kind of you know invokes that imagery of like you know the betty crocker kind of kind of thing and i think that's what they're going for um, in the music. Uh, just give it a listen. I think you'll hear what I'm talking about and what they're talking about. The other thing I picked up from Top Shelf is the new Rat Boys, of course. Um, I don't think I'd seen this one shown yet. I've also definitely talked about Rat Boys before on this channel. Um, I've been kind of, um, you know, waiting for this one to come out. And, uh, this is their third album. I think it's their second on Top Shelf. And this one is uh, probably their best one, honestly. Uh, the production is, is better than ever. The songs are just as strong, if not stronger than ever. And, um, you know, they're... So I've, I've seen them live before. I can't remember who it was with. I think it was with Foxing? I want to say that was in 2018. Um, anyway, um, yeah, the full band, you know, there's like a four or five piece, but uh, at the core, it's these two members. And, um, you know, they write all the songs and and everything. And so, what am I trying to say? They, yeah, they're getting way more popular now, not to sound like a hipster or anything, but, um, you know, I've been a fan for a little while at this point, and now I see they're playing like a Bernie Sanders rally and... Um, they were going to be at uh, South by Southwest again this year before they got canceled. Um, so yeah, it's cool to see them getting a lot of recognition. And uh, it's always cool to be a fan of uh, and seeing one of your, your favorite groups kind of blown up. Um, so the other new thing I got is the new uh, Sweet Fan Stevens release, Aporia. Um, he did this one with his, uh, label manager slash, I think he's his father-in-law or father figure, um, Lil Brahms. Um, so this is like ambient, new age, uh, sort of music, not a typical Sufjan Stevens release. Um, I did get the limited, uh, yellow press, not that I think it's super hard to get at this point, but, um. You know, Asthmatic Kitty always puts out a, a solid Sufjan Stevens album uh, package. So the art is good. The music is is good. Definitely not what I think Sufjan Stevens fans are, um, are really craving at this point. Um, we're really itching for more, um, you know, singer-songwriter um, type material from him, which I feel like we're kind of due for at this point. Um, Everyone got excited whenever he, it looked like he was gonna announce a new album. And then, um, you know, when he when he finally released a single and it was like an ambient thing, I think a lot of people were uh, sort of disappointed. And, um, you know, but I picked it up and it's, it's good, it's a good album. If you like ambient music or kind of um, atmospheric, instrumental uh, sort of stuff, give it a listen, definitely. And then, um, yeah, some, some not-so-modern records, or, well, let me just start showing when I picked up. So all these are from Half Price Books. Um, 
this was back in, I want to say February when we went. Um, I found some some cool stuff out of High Price Books. Not the one in town, but uh, where is that one? Burleson, Burleson, Texas. So I picked up this, uh, you know, Janis Joplin, Old Cosmic Blues. Um, sort of a, a rough cover, the vinyl is nice VG, you know, um, plays super good. This was like $2, $3 uh, marked down, so. Uh, I'd had this one before, I don't remember when I got rid of it, but I had regretted it. And I'm just kind of, you know, picking them up cheap where I can get them uh, for these common ones. So I had to pick that up. Also, um, from the same store, I'd seen this there. This has been there for a couple, the last couple visits I made through, um, I want to say like November was the first time I went to that one. Um, this has been sitting there, uh, Ultimate Spinach debut I think this one's 68 either 67 or 68 um yeah just psychedelic classic I've been wanting this one for a while great guitar work um great songs and uh this one was marked at uh I want to say 1999 for a long time and they had finally uh put it down to uh 9.99 so I picked it up at, at that price uh it's a little rough it has a pretty nasty mark on the first side. And that's why I was hesitant to pick it up even at the $20 price, but for 10, you know, it was worth the risk and it plays good. You know, it has some noise obviously, but um, it's, it's a good player. Uh, but wanting this one for a little while now, like I mentioned, just some good psychedelic. And speaking of psychedelic, um, kind of a cool score. This is the Human Beings uh, Evolutions, their second album. And second out of two, I believe. So yeah, this one was marked at 10 and I kind of couldn't believe it. I've had some really good luck at that, um, that half price book. So um, if you're in the area, maybe go check it out. Um, Cause I think, I think they're still open or still doing uh, orders. Are right, half price books still open? Curbside pickup? They're doing mm -hmm. curbside pickup um, online and online orders. So maybe uh, whenever everything blows over, if you're in the area and you're nearby, go check out that store because they kind of have some good deals um, on stuff and I'm able to find uh, some cool records for, for cheap prices. So um, yeah, like I said, this is uh, The Human Beings um, second album and it's way more psychedelic than the first one and they were definitely way more adventurous with it. Um, I hadn't heard this one in its entirety before picking this up, but um, it's yeah, it's really solid. Um, you know, you got your I call it more pop psych. It's not like a super heady, um, you know, real trip, um, but it's it's some good uh, 60s psychedelic uh, pop, pop rock. The songs are, you know, whimsical at times and uh, you either like that or you don't. But um, at any rate, this is kind of a harder to find record and uh, really nice shape as you can, you, you can kind of see. I think it's like a 30, 40, $50 album. So 10 bucks, definitely pick that up all day. And then uh, I wasn't in there in person when we got this one, but um, this is My Bloody Valentine, um, self-titled. I think this was a 2010 album, I want to say. Um, it's definitely more recent, and it's not on Spotify. And it's kind of divisive. I think most My Bloody Valentine super fans obviously love this album, but as far as... Um, non-fans go. I think, you know, Loveless is the one they stick with, and then uh, Isn't Anything it would be the other one, but um, yeah, this is a, in my opinion, a really solid album. Um, this one's a long time in the making, and uh, really happy to find this. I think this one, was this one $10 also? It was like, I think it was like 10 or 15 um, you know, which is about what it goes for, but, you know, super nice shape. And then it's it's got the gatefold, comes with the, you know, it's like super heavy vinyl on a, a nice inner sleeve. And the only thing is, is missing the CD it came with. Um, so if anyone has a CD that they don't have a, a record with, let me know if you're willing to part with that, because I need a CD for that. And um, yeah, moving on, that's everything I got from Half Price Books this, uh, these past couple months. And then the rest of this is, um, well, let me, let me just start showing stuff and I'll, I'll tell the stories behind it. So all of these next 
several albums, which is about half of what I'm showing today. Um, it's all from one collection I picked up locally here in Waco. Um, I shouldn't even say collection. It wasn't a full record collection. They have a lot more, but I kind of cherry picked um, all the good stuff, made a good bundle and I uh, got these for a good price. I didn't get these for like, you know, pennies on the dollar, which would be cool and it'd be a good story, but um, it's stuff I've been wanting for a little while and um, stuff you don't really see too much of. Um, so I'll start with some of the less exciting stuff. Actually, these are all alph alphabetical right now. Um, so yeah, starting off uh, a really good Clean as Clear Water uh, starter pack, you know, these four albums. It's not the first four, I think it's like two through five. But, um, you know, Bayou Country, um, I've definitely had this one before. Not my favorite, but, um, hey, it's got Proud Mary on there. And uh, Born on the Bayou, that's another classic Credence song. Um, Green River, I think everyone loves this one. You know, Green River Commotion, Bad Room Rising, uh, Lodi. Um, just a classic. I've never had this one before. I always see this one kind of overpriced. Um, you know, Lily and the Poor Boys, kind of, uh, you know, more of a, more of a, a boogie, boogie isn't the right word, but like kind of a, a skiffle or shuffle sort of sound on a lot of these. So down on the corner, obviously, is what I'm talking about, four by shuffle. And then uh, on the other side, you got Fortunate Son, which is sort of their, um, you know, famous song. And then uh, I've never owned this one either, Cosmos Factory. Um, getting a little more uh, studio heavy with the uh, you know traveling band, um, looking at my back door, run through the jungle, up around the bend, who will stop the rain, and um, wow, this is a really good album. Just uh, now, kind of looking at the track list, um, I know a lot of these from, you know, I, I was introduced to them through like a greatest hits compilation, so uh, a lot of them are from this album. You know, heard through the grapevine, as long as I can see the light to close out the album. Um, so yeah, that's a good one. An upgrade copy for me, or, or at least the, the record is upgrade. The cover, I can never, so the cover is in nice shape, but it's, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. It's um, as an upgrade for me, if, if only I could remember my name, David Crosby. Uh, love the picture of him on the back. Um, so this one's getting a lot of talk. You know, it's kind of a super, uh, super group lineup. A lot of, a lot of your favorite, um, you know, California, late 60s, early 70s musicians show up on here. Uh, a lot of Grateful Dead members, Neil Young, uh, that kind of thing. So, very, it's almost like a spiritual experience, like kind of a, a drugged out, um, burnt out, spiritual experience. The songs are great. This one, uh, definitely my favorite of his solo releases. One of the best, um, I put it up there with the best Neil Young albums of, uh, you know, some of the best Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young solo material, even. Um, it's just, you know, that good of an album. Definitely check it out if you haven't heard it before. And, uh, you know, I see this one around on online. I feel like the prices are a little bit inflated online, but I see it around locally pretty frequently um, for pretty cheap, you know, five to probably 15 bucks. Um, but you definitely want a really clean copy, and that's why I got to upgrade to this. The vinyl on my last one was uh, VG at best, and I upgraded to a nice VG plus. Um, you can't tell on this uh, inner sleeve, but uh, it's nice. And what I was talking about with the with the cover, the cover is obviously pretty good. It's got like a little bit of a, a ding up there in the in the in the top, and then as you can see, the spine is um, uh, uncentered. So the you know the title and, and artist are you know kind of mush onto the front there it's just a little bit off center so i'd like to upgrade the cover just because um you know i think i think cover matters there i said it <laughs> uh you know the the presentation of a of a record matters to me the uh, the cover art and then um i forget where i even heard this from but the philosophy of like you when you have a collection of anything you know movies books records what have you um you're only enjoying it, you know, when it's out, you know, you're, and you're, you know, listening to the music or watching the movie or whatever. And the rest of the 99% of the time when you have it, when you're not actively um, partaking in it, you know, it's sitting on the shelf and the spine is all you see of it. And so I, I do think that matters. You know, I think um, people, 
have you know their opinions about that, but I think you know, presentation matters and that kind of thing. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, I've been looking for this one for a long time um, as well. Graham Parsons, Grievous Angel. Um, I think this has been kind of um, talked to death about in the VC, so I don't really need, need to say too much about Graham Parsons, but you know, uh, Flying Burrito Brothers, um, International Submarine Band, uh, and he was on the, the Birds Sweetheart of the Rodeo album. And um, his solo material is, is uh, pretty melancholy and um, he's sort of a tragic figure, you know, I, um, I forget how he died, but it was like kind of um, shady and uh, sort of tragic. And um, anyway, this album I've been looking for for a long time. This is not a first press. It's a, it's like a second or third, still an early press, you know, of the time. But you can tell just because it has the Warner Brothers label there on the rim. Um, but anyway, it's a super clean copy. Uh, can't complain about that. Uh, and Lou Harris features heavily on here um, doing vocals. And he's kind of credited with uh, sort of discovering her. That's really cool. And then the rest of these albums are all the same artists. Um, it's pretty much a complete discography up until... Um, I want to say mid 80s so his first um i haven't even counted how many there are um first like almost 10 albums here and kind of going like uh two decades or so worth of music but um john prine and um i've definitely been especially looking for his debut for a long time and um there was not one but two copies of it and i'll get into that here at the end of the video but um I'm only keeping one. The second one will be uh, for trade or sale. And this is the uh, original first pressing. A lot of these are, again, kind of the second pressings. Um, not that it matters too much because, you know, the music is is all the same. Um, really nice uh, copy on Atlantic. These first four are on Atlantic. And they all have, you know, all the inserts and everything. Um, so yeah, I've been looking for, um, especially this one, and, and this is the one to, to get. If you're gonna get one John, John Prine record, it should definitely be this one. Um, it's probably his best, but he's another one of those artists where I don't think he's ever put out a bad album. Uh, maybe some are better than others, but they're all um, really solid. So there's that one. His second one here, Diamonds in the Rough. And um, again, it's on Atlantic. It's a second press with the um, insert and really solid. I'll kind of blow through these pretty quickly. Sweet Revenge, Common Sense. Oh, and I, I found a, a copy of Common Sense at Half Price Books. I forgot to show that earlier. But um, so again, I have two copies of this one if anyone needs that. And then you get into his um, Asylum releases, so uh, this one, Bruised Orange. What is this one? 1978. I thought this was interesting. The uh, it's one of those where the inside of the jacket is uh, is colored, so it's it's orange. I think that's really fun. You got Pink Cadillac and Storm Windows. And then these uh, last two were on a label I'd actually never heard of before, but um, 1984, you have Aimless Love. It's on Oh Boy Records. I'll show the label. Kind of a simple label, but there you go. There, there it is, Oh Boy. Never seen that one before. And uh, the last one I have here is German Afternoons. Not his last album. Um, he just put one out, I want to say, in it was either 2017 or 18. Um, maybe it was even 19. I, d I don't remember, but again, that one is also good. And um, all of these are really solid. I had never heard most of those before, um, especially the Asylum and um, Oh Boy releases, obviously. Um, all really solid. All excellent. I'm really happy to have those. Um, again, kind of... Uh, paid up a little bit, but not what they go for online. Really happy about that. All right, and the rest of these are all from 
when uh, we've been on lockdown here. So a, a kind of a silver lining um, is that, you know, on Instagram and Facebook and stuff, a lot of uh, indie record stores have been posting um, some records online, some rare stuff. And as someone that only has, you know, one record store in town, um, I, I follow a lot of record stores on Instagram. And so it's really cool seeing them uh, post all their rare stuff for sale because um, a lot of those stores don't usually post anything for sale on Instagram, uh, which I can respect. Again, it's kind of the thing with you want to, you know, have the cool records in store and, and kind of, uh, you know, reward customers for coming in and, and dedicated collectors coming in looking for stuff. Um, you want to have cool records in stock, obviously. Um, but with, with all the stores being closed, um, it's kind of cool being able to get some uh, rare records and support an uh, independent store at the same time. And so uh, to say all that, I've only picked up one from a store online. Uh, one of the Dallas ones, Josie Records, um, they posted this uh, in a group of several other records. Um, but this is the one I picked up. It's Nina Simone, Silk and Soul, and it's a, a German pressing kind of a fun thing but it's you know near mint the cover's got a little bit of wear but um um musically it's, it's kind of in that interesting period where she's transitioning from that kind of um the overdub like orchestral she's transitioning from the sort of jazziness to the more soul or r&b or funk sort of thing so a lot of the tracks on here like it bees that way sometime um which one? Uh, these are out of order, I think, from how they actually are on the record. But uh, I can't remember the, the titles, but, I'll, you know, it, it's kind of bookended by so, like a more live band feel, you know, like kind of um, great drum work, guitar, bass, that sort of thing. And um, you have a lot of, you know, your more orchestral sort of stuff, like she does a... Um, cover of The Look of Love from Casino Royale and uh, you know just stuff like that sort of that saccharine sort of uh, production um, again German pressing on the uh, RCA Victor label and sort of interesting about the cover on this this is definitely you know mm -hmm. Silk and Soul but um, it's you know it's titled High Priestess of Soul and it even says that on the spine but then on the on the label it says Silk and Soul, and on the front cover it says Silk and Soul, and then she had another record on a different label. I, I believe it was uh, Phillips called High Priestess of Soul. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, that there's just some confusion on the uh, translation or something, or not translation, but the uh, confusion with the marketing in a different country. Uh, anyway, really happy to get that and support a store. And then these last couple of the most recent ones I picked up. Uh, supporting Buddy Hank from uh, Smokestack Records, the um, you know he does they do pop ups um, locally in, in Tennessee um, that sort of area with uh, records that they they pick up they get some cool stuff and obviously everything got shut down so they, they were not able to do their pop up they had scheduled um, what they did is they uh, posted everything on Instagram and uh, you know just put it all up for grabs so I got a nice uh, little um, small stack of records here for a great price. Again, some stuff I've been looking for. Um, yeah, good, good deal on these, you hooked me up. So, um, Blues Magoos, uh, Electric Comic Book. It does not have the uh, insert, the the, uh, the comic book with it, but it's a mono first press, really nice. Um, some cover wear, but sort of, uh, the vinyl plays nice, nice VG, and um, can't complain about the price. Same sort of story with this. Um, the cover wear and the um, the record is is mostly VG. It's got a one bad scratch on the first side that um, just has some loud ticks when I play it. But um, yeah, Human Beings again. Uh, their first album, Nobody But Me. I've been looking for this one for a pretty long time. Obviously everyone loves the song Nobody But Me. And um, and the rest of the album is, is uh, more pop, garage, pop, pop rock sort of thing. But um, this one's sort of scarce in my area. I never, I never see it. 
And so, um, to find it, I think he had this one listed for five bucks. I think that's what it was. Um, definitely lower than what it goes for online. So thanks for that one. And one more from the want list, uh, Blue Cheer, new improved Blue Cheer. Um, this one is the one that's got Randy Holden on uh, side two. Great guitar work, obviously coming from Blue Cheer. And uh, this is the first press, um, nice VG plus all around. Um, again, just one I've been wanting for a long time. So now I have the first three uh, Blue Cheer records, um, which is really cool because I think like a year ago I had maybe the first one and then I found um, Outside Inside somewhat recently also I showed that in a, in a video. All right, so then um, that's everything I got. So I just wanted to show these real quick. Again, these are um, what I've got uh, for trade or for sale if anyone wants them. Uh, a, another copy of John Prine's self-titled. Again, it's a later repress, um, I think late 70s. It's still Atlantic label, but you can tell because of the, um, again, the Warner Brothers label on the rim. Here's the copy of Common Sense I picked up from Half Price Books. Uh, this one is in slightly uh, worse shape than the other one, but um, pretty solid, I think, um, at least VG. And I, I guess, I can't remember if that was the first pressing or not. Uh, it's definitely a, a 70s. And then here's the other copy of, um, if only I could remember my name uh, that I'm upgrading from. Again, it plays with some noise and um, and everything like that. So yeah, that's everything I've got. Um, I hope that everyone's doing well out there. I hope that everyone's staying healthy. Um, I know I haven't been commenting as much, but I'm still out there watching. And um, yeah, it's good to see you guys. Um, I'll see you in the comments. Take care.